known for his reliability, hard work and consistency. This Maroons Ironman played top level rugby league for well over 10 years, including 24 appearances for his state and 9 for his country. A key member of the 1995 Queensland Origin squad that defied all the odds to sweep the series 3-0. This back rower hailing from Gladstone always put his hand up for one more run or one more tackle. Gary Larson. So Big Larson, it's great to uh, have you in the car mate with us mate, thanks for joining us. Thank you Petro mate, my pleasure mate. Mate and I've got to tell you this, I'm going to be honest for a moment, but uh, I'm going to just let you know that a um, bit of a fanboy moment here for me because uh, you know, growing up uh, in the 80s and you know early 90s, you know, obviously State of Origin was a massive part of my uh, my childhood, you know, sitting on the lounge room floor like every other Queensland kid of that, that yes. era. Yes. But mate, you know, you were, you were one of my favourites because uh, I just um, loved uh, everything you did. You stood for Queensland and, you know, I loved the fact that, you know, whenever New South Wales were always talked about and talked up as being going to be the dominant side in, in whatever Origin Series you played in, you always stood up, mate, and you always, uh, you always gave your all. So I reckon this is a big moment for me and I reckon also for my dad too. So Petro Senior, I know you'll be watching this, but we love watching you, mate. You're, you're one of our favourites. So uh, I'm going to make sure at the end of this, I'm going to get a photo for dad, yep, all right? Yep, yep, That's yep. all right. So we'll, we'll go right back to the start, mate. So I'm um, born in Gladstone and you grew up in Miriamvale. So yeah. to tell us a, a bit about that, mate, yeah. in the early days. Well, I was born in Gladstone Hospital. You know, I, 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 and I grew up in a small town called Miriamvale yep. on the Bruce Highway between Gladstone and Bundaberg. And yeah, mum and dad were farmers, cattle, tobacco farming, up until about 1979. Mm -hmm. uh, and then dad went into uh, cattle and timber cutting and working on the railway here and there in Marionvale. But uh, myself, yeah, went to school in Marionvale. Uh, Marionvale school went from year one to year 10. Yeah, we got into everything. Yeah, good place to grow up. Yeah, right? swimming, holidaying down the beach. Agnes Water, 1770, was 45 minutes away from yeah. us. Every school holidays, we would jump in the old five count caravan and we'd be <laughs> down to 1770, Agnes Waters. And that's what we did as kids. Yeah. And in, in during the year, whatever sport was to go, yeah. we played. Yeah. So, footy, footy season, cricket in the cricket season, athletics. Yeah. You know, it was. It was but the main two sports I was into was athletics yeah. and, and rugby league. Rugby league. So if I'm going talk about your, uh, getting into rugby league, now I understand uh, you were seven uh, when you first uh, started playing footy there for uh, is it Gladstone Wallabies? Yes, Glad Gladstone Wallabies. Yeah. Uh, so it was back in 1974. Yeah. Uh, again, Dad's footy mates rang around Marionvale <laughs> and trying to. <laughs> trying to get kids together to, 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 to uh, help out at the struggling team in Gladstone. The team in Gladstone was Wallabies Junior Football Club. And yeah, it all started off at under eights Wallabies. Uh, went through right till about, I left for boarding school. I played league right up until about under 14s. Had a couple of years off with athletics. Uh, I was a 400, 800 metre runner. And then I went to boarding school played rugby union. I made Queensland country, I made an Australian schoolboys so under 17 side. Uh, Ricky Stewart was in that same yeah, side. Yeah. Believe it or not, I was playing on the wing. Yeah. <laughs> I was a centre in my younger days. There you go. There you go. I had a bit of speed, Petra. <laughs> At the end of the, end of the day, yeah. that's where it all started it all in Gladstone. Started. Yeah. Yeah. So just talk to me about um, those trips that you trips did as a junior, like that, it's a big, you yep. know, responsibility of your mum and dad, and then all the other families as oh, well for to, sure. to get you to know, all these training yeah. sessions. And that. Yeah, look at the, at the end of the day, uh, you know, Glaston from Miravale's is it's only an hour, mm. but back then the, the roads weren't that crash hot. Yeah, you know, you know, country roads, yeah. country yeah. roads like like we're on now, yeah. probably <laughs> a little bit worse than what we're on. There, but <laughs> it's like this: so Tuesdays and Thursdays up to Glaston after school. Yeah. And that's the same on Saturday mornings, the footy. And if mum and dad, you know, they're in the, they're in the crop crop industry, tobacco, yeah. Yeah. cattle, um, if they were busy, and my, my brother and myself, Chris, we used to get a ride up um, with, with another family. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we did, we just, country people help each other share out. Share it out. Share yeah. it out, yeah. 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 Not only for club footy, but rep footy was the same. Exactly. Yeah. You know, when the rep season was on, you know, it was a busy time, a yes. busy, a busy 
four or to six weeks where every weekend you were probably Gladstone playing Rocky, which was two hours north of Gladstone, or going to Bundaberg, uh, Emerald, yeah, Emerald, Blackwater, uh, Central Highlands was, was say, for three and a half, four hours out west, Mara, um, Villa Wheeler, they were all uh, a yeah, good, good couple hundred k's away. Um, and that's where it all started, Petro. You know, playing rep footy, uh, th right through from under 10s, under 12s, under 14s. And uh, you know, creating mateships that have lasted for a long time and still there. Yeah. You, you think about you know, the sacrifice of your, your, your parents, yourself, and yourself, oh, them, yeah. and, and, and but yeah. just the community coming together to try and yep. get you guys to, to sports. Yep. You know, it's yep. it's, a, it's amazing, and it's probably something that I reckon is resonating through a lot yep. of the chats that I've had with it, all our legends. It, you know? it is, mate. It's the same thing I've done for my kids. Yes. In there, and yeah. my daughter was a netballer. You know, I've travelled backwards and forwards to Brisbane. <laughs> I don't know how many times in a car. <laughs> It's something that you do yeah. and as a proud parent. If, you, if, you're, if your son and daughter uh, have got uh, an inch of talent, yeah. you do the best for yeah, them you can. The yeah, yeah. Was it a big bit of a culture shock um, going <laughs> from, you know, from from home now you're, you're in the boarding school, that boarding school life? Yes, yeah, very much so, yeah. mate. I, I was homesick and you know, Rocky was only 100. 130 k's away, but it was it was one of those things where boarding schools like you go into any new environment, you've got to uh, earn respect yeah. for your yeah. fellow uh, people, yeah. and uh, and yeah, I had to earn respect, and it was good that I played sport. I think I went to boarding school for sport. Yes, it wasn't so much the academic yeah. uh, <laughs> side of things, Petro, but uh, I fitted right in there. So you reached the heights in your school uh, school sport, didn't you? You, you played Australian schoolboys, yep, yep. and then athletics as well. You, you made a, a yeah, well, it, 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 yeah, in under twelves, under thirteens, mm -hmm. at state level, mm -hmm. I, I I ran at state level. And I, I won a state championship in, in the eight hundred yeah. as a twelve year old. So um, yeah. that, that that background, that athletics background, I think that created that fitness background yeah. that okay. I had that gave that in base. the game. Yeah. yeah. Because I had an athletics coach, and all we did for training was, was, was 400s. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and as a 12, 13, 14 year old, I think I had pretty good discipline. Yeah. And then I still today, that fitness discipline is still with me. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's, it's hard for me not to do something. That's it, that's it. Whether it be walking with Golding Retriever, yeah. <laughs> or doing push ups and sit ups, yeah. doing something. Yeah. Yeah. Mate, and, you know, that doesn't surprise me, you know, that. I was always amazed at your work rate, you know, like whenever it, it just looked like the blues were tiring, uh, didn't matter what club game you were playing and always you could always count on Gary Larson because he was just kept marching forward and so yeah, you credit that athletic background for just giving you that base and, yeah. and that fitness level yeah. that, that like, sustained you throughout your whole career. Yeah, it helped out enormously. Because yeah. if you didn't have that fitness base and you wanted to go and bludge on the blind, <laughs> that was quite easy to do. Yeah. But also, you know, you, you were picked out yes. where you were. Exactly. You can't <laughs> hide in that arena. Now, you've gone from Rocky Grammar, now you went back to Gladstone for yes. an apprenticeship. Yep, yeah. I did. I, after school, um, as I said, I, I, I managed to pass, just pass, just pass. <laughs> just pass. at school. Yeah. So yeah, went back to Gladstone and immediately got back, straight back into rugby league at a local club site there called uh, I played under 19 Valleys yep. for a year yes. and then um, went over to A grade the next year and played with a club side called the QASC Red Devils. So, so 80, 85, 86 I played league yes. and yeah, I, I had a pretty pretty good couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a big fish in a little pond. Yeah, that's it, eh? And it's, it's funny, I double signed with QASC Red Devils <laughs> in Miriam Vale. They had a local A grade side. And, I was in Glasson playing league. When I wasn't in Glasson playing league, I played league in Marionvale. Marionvale happened to have a successful season that year. They played in an exhibition game against the Bundaberg Grand Finalists. It was a good game. I played well. North Sydney scout by the name of Noel Kavanagh. Mm -hmm. and he was an old North Sydney player. He asked me if I wanted to play for North Sydney. You never know who's watching you exactly. on the sideline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, at the end of the day, that's where it all started. Yeah, it's unreal. And um, I, I made 
the CQ Capra's A grade side yep. in 86, the beginning of 86, and then um, it's played in the state league. Yep. So it's played against sides East, yeah, Ipswich, yeah. Winner Manly. Oh, the day we played against Winner Manly. <laughs> You know, the, the, all the big guns were there. Yeah. Gino, I was in the centres and I was marking up against Gino. Yeah. How old were they? 19? Oh, 19, 19, yeah. yeah. And That's big, senior here. Yeah. Your hero. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. And um, we played Redcliffe too yeah. uh, at yeah. Marley Brown Oval. Yeah. Uh, Steve Cherry. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. there, 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 there were some big names, big names yeah. in the Redcliffe yeah. side. Yeah. It's great to, to bring, fire up those memories again, mate. Oh, yeah. the, the, an Thank amazing you. time. Now, you got picked in a CQ um, rep side, did you tour or PNG? Yeah. Was it no, around that's, that same that's so, so the CQ uh, State League yep. that year, the old KFC State League, yes. at the end of that um, competition, they picked a Queensland countryside. Mm-hmm. And that side happened to be um, coached by uh, Laurie Fryer. And we went to Papua New Guinea to play a President's 13 over there. And I still had a pretty good piece. I was still playing in the centres yeah. then. But I ended up, I broke my hand on someone's head over there in a tackle. I don't know what my hand was doing around his head, but I broke my hand. Just gentle massage. Just gentle massage, yeah, over the years I was massaging his <laughs> No, but uh, I probably only lasted about half a game over there because I broke my hand. But, uh, <laughs> and that was, that was an eye-opener, a real eye-opener for me as a 19-year-old going to Papua New Guinea. Oh, man, I can imagine. And, uh, again, you just don't take everything in. Yes. And yes. if I had my way again as a young bloke, I'd be writing down everything, 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 game plans and everything <laughs> people were saying to that's me. Right, you know what I mean? Right. Now tell me this, um, you've got a local oval at yeah, well, named yeah. after you now. Is, is it a bit controversial? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah a little bit yeah. of controversy. Um, and I, again, I can I understand why, because I only spilt a little bit of blood yeah. on the on the local oval. Yeah. Uh, you know, I played a lot of a lot of football as a schoolboy on the oval, yes. but not as a senior level. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. that one year I had at Marineville, yeah. we probably played you know a handful of home games at Marineville, yeah. but that's probably the only time I played senior football at Marineville. Yeah. There were so many of the my dad's era yes. and my dad for him. They played there every weekend right, yeah. and spilled much more blood than what I did. And a couple of local legends, yes, yes. Uh, they're a lot older than me. Yeah. It's sort of like, think, oh, maybe I should have the, uh, yeah. maybe just the bar named after me or the canteen <laughs> named after me rather than the oval. Gotcha. Yeah, so uh, I think they're all pretty good. Yeah, well, about mate, it, well, mate. Nonetheless, mate, a, a massive honour now. Oh, you know, for sure. I, just, just to. You know, it's, it's, it's just, you never forget where you come from, yes, yes, Petro, exactly, but right. I never have, yeah. and I'm always humbled, walking into the pub at Marion Vale yeah. Hotel, yeah. I'm always humbled by walking in there because I've got a little bit of a shrine in the corner, uh, photos of myself and all that sort of stuff, yeah, and yeah, yeah it's, uh, they're the people that have supported me, and, and you want to uphold that integrity from where you come from, I'm, that's, they're the people I'm representing take it into that yeah. that origin arena yes and um and you don't want to let anyone down that's exactly it mate yeah well mate as i said as a fan mate you never did mate you never did and oh. that was a great quality that you always had and you know talking about origin now we're sort of getting into that period there yeah. that, that first ever origin game when big arty you know led that the, the maroons in oh. for the first time what what impact did that have on you yeah. as, a, as a young bloke but mate i'm sitting on the floor of the lounge yeah waiting for the origin to come on. Here's this event yes. that's just about to happen. And holy moly, you know, as a, as a, as a 13 year old in 1980, wow, <laughs> wow, oh, that's something I want to aspire to. Yeah, yeah, and you know, any, any, any kid in any sport wants to, wants to represent their state, not only their region, mm-hmm. but they want to represent their, their state and their country. That's it. And I'm very, very privileged to have done that. Yeah. But I think my brother and I ever end up playing a game of football in front of the origin. Yeah. You know, whenever there was a break, yeah. you know, you'd lean over and whack him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're with, 30, yeah, with the 13 and 12 year olds, there's only a year difference. Yeah. You know, 
then you'd have the football in your own. <laughs> So there's, there's, there's things we did. Yeah, and I think that that, uh, that that would have been played all over the state. I reckon that that same, that same scenario. Exactly. Carpet burn on the knees or exactly. whatever. Exactly. Exactly you know? right. In the lounge room, the small <laughs> lounge room. <laughs> and your mum would be yelling, hey, sit down, you <laughs> blokes. You know, <laughs> cut it out. <laughs> Don't throw that ball around. <laughs> yeah. You're not chip kicking in the lounge room. <laughs> or, <laughs> or gang tackling. That's right. And then, then your dad would get down the lounge room floor on his <laughs> knees and then you'd go, you'd, you'd You'd be all into it. All into it. That's yeah. it. So, when you got your chance to go down to Sydney, so you, you get down to North Sydney Bears. Um, to, talk to me about um, your, your first grade debut because yeah, it, sure. it didn't come easy though. Because no, I didn't, no, no. You, you, you went down to Sydney uh, with, with, with your knee. Yep. Talk to me through, yep. through that. Towards the end of the season, '86, yeah, I hurt my knee. Mm. The, the advice I got uh, was, yeah, it'll be right. Do the physio on it, strap it up. Mm. Bang, it would collapse on me. So I, I rang up North Sydney and said, oh, God, there's, there's some rocks with me. It keeps collapsing on me. And so they sort of like it down there, get their doctors to have a look at it. So the doctors had a look at it. Yeah, bad news. You've done your ACL. So they fixed it up for me. I did all the rehabilitation that was required and more. Yes. And that was the key, and more. Uh, I, I sort of like went overboard. So it took a long time. I was doing weights and... Uh, uh, I don't know the grinder. I don't yeah. know how, how much grinding I did and bike riding around yeah. hills around North Sydney training yeah. ovals. Um, that what I wasn't going down there mm. to fail. Yes, yes. That was in the back of my mind. And you sort of felt that you wanted to repay. Yes, North Sydney very training. much so. Yeah. They saw me <laughs> at my best, and yeah. I wanted to get back no, to that. Awesome. And that, that that drove me, mate. Yeah. I started off playing under 23s, you know, trying to get the confidence. Uh, spent a good 12 months playing under 23s, then uh, reserve grade, uh, getting used to not being the the big fish in the little pond, because there are a lot of old heads uh, that have had their A grade uh, careers uh, coming to an end that were playing reserve grade. Right. Yes, yes. So the, yeah, you learn a lot off them. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, um, one night of training and then uh, towards uh, uh, 88, the end of 88, uh, we were doing a sort of like um, some um, tackling drills and uh, a reserve grade versus A grade yeah. in, a, in a simulated game. And Frank Stanton was the coach at the time. Oh. And um, I, was, I was belting a few A graders and <laughs> um, they didn't like that, so they belted us back. And we just, reserve graders just, you know, we wanted to be in an A grade, right, yeah. you know yeah. how it was, spot, yeah. and uh, Frank Stan noticed this and basically came over to me after training, he said, Larson, you're sitting on the bench for uh, A grade this weekend, Jeez, and, uh, and that's how it all started, no, so I was, uh, I went from the centres to the forwards, <laughs> and, uh, and learned quickly the, the role of a, of a, of a back row and yep. a forward. And uh, from that first grade experience, you know, and you're playing regularly in the first grade, and then all, all of a sudden yes. you get the the, the call up. In yeah, the, yeah. In the like, Maroons. In, I mean, well, what was that like? Who, who rang you, and who, who, who told you? And then what was that feeling like? You know. Good, good question, mate. Good question. It's just a guess on who called me. <laughs> I think it was Ross Livermore. Yeah, Ross. Livermore. Ross used to call the players back then. Uh, the coach in 91, that was my first uh, Origin Series in 91. Uh, and, yeah, good, I, was, I was playing good footy in 91, and Norse were playing good footy. We were, we were in the top five. Uh, Jacko yes. was playing for us, Peter Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, Jacko eased me into the uh, arena. Uh, I wasn't a big uh, drinker at the yeah. time, but uh, he told us, yeah, just it'd be, it'd be an eye opener again. <laughs> But yeah, so Ross Livermore rang me up, uh, told me that I'd, I'd, I'd made the squad and, and Graham yeah, Lowe, yeah. and uh, we were you know, looking forward to uh, you know, welcome you to the family. Yeah, and yeah. and that's, he was right, it's a family. It's a family, yeah. It's a family. And um, uh, that, the memories of that first game now, I, uh, oh, yeah. I, the, what was it like, you know, walking into that, that dressing room and seeing the likes of, I guess, Wally and Alfred, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. likes you looked up to. And yeah. Was there anything that shocked you? Was there anything um, that sort of like, 
It's a movie in their preparations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I laugh. It's not, you know, you get in the dressing rooms leading into the game, and again, different. everyone's different. Yes, yes. Everyone's always different. And you just get to yourself. Yeah. For me, the grandstand, the old grandstand was still in place yes. in 91, and you could hear the noise yeah, yeah. more prevalent yes. above the grandstand. Yeah, that's it. And that, you know, that, that, sent, you know, that, that, that made you nervous. Yes. And then, then Alfie starts spewing and Walsh starts, you know, having a bit of a chuck. Oh, and Marty Bella, and, you know, <laughs> starts having a bit of a heave. And, yeah, look, like, yeah, um, that, that, that's, that's, you know, they're ready, they're, they're just right. nervous, they're thinking that's, about it, that you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I learned that, I learned that, you know, everyone has their own ways of, of, of uh, combating nerves. Yeah. Yeah. Mine was uh, sitting on the dunny reading the program, <laughs> you know, if theirs came out that end, mine came out the other end, <laughs> sorry, <Yeah. laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's, that, and all, that was me all, through my playing career, yeah, yeah. that's how I went in and just yeah. chilled out. Just dealt, dealt or just, just how I dealt. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really think about it yeah, much yeah. until yeah. you know you went out to the warm up. Yeah. Mm. When you're doing the warm up, you start running things through your head. Yes. You have a, uh, a you know, I just got a favourite moment. Is it when you were ran out for Queensland for the first time? I mean, that, that must yeah. have been electric. Oh, yeah, just just the noise. Yeah. The yeah. noise will always. Yeah, the first Origin Series, I'll always remember, yeah. and the 95 Origin Series. Yes. yes. And the last one, mm. my last one under, in 1998, yeah. when Wayne was coached. Right. Yeah. Uh, I wish I had been coached by him a bit more. Yeah. Yeah, right. You know, would have liked to have learned the game more yes. under him. Under him yeah. Would have loved to have done that. Maybe, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe he wasn't the type of player he was, I was after, or yeah. he was after, yeah. I'm not sure. But I, I got on well with Wayne yes. then, yeah. and uh, learned a few tricks off Wayne. Yeah. As, like I was, uh, when I retired, I was 30? Yes. Yeah. yeah, 31. 31. 31. Yeah. 31. Yeah. 31. I, so I'd, I'd, I'd had enough of Origin. Yeah. Yeah. It was wearing me down. Yes, yes. And I couldn't go back to my club land and play to the, my best there. Yeah, yeah right. And I really wanted that. That was just me. I didn't want again, let people down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sort of had to battle with with, with injuries at different stages. Yep. Uh, but, you know, you hold an amazing record. It was 24 Origin matches in a row. I mean, that's yep. that's an amazing run of consecutive of Origin matches. Yeah. Um, and, and, like, at that time, did you were you conscious of that you were just racking up Origin after Origin and the fact that, you know, you were able to uh, have that longevity in your Origin career where you... Injury didn't hamper you from, from, from reaching that. Yeah, that, that. sure, mate. Look, Petra, there's a couple of times there I was lucky to. to, to well, I didn't finish some games because mm -hmm. I was knocked out in a couple of games. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, prior to some Origin series, yeah, you, know, you always have bad corks or, or, or this a niggling little injury. Yes. But the staff, the doctors, mm -hmm. They got you through. Got through yeah. The docks, the flying dock. <laughs> uh, you know, the doctors in every Origin series were amazing. Yeah. The physio staff in every Origin series were amazing. Yeah. Amazing. They got you through, yeah. mate. To, to hold that record, look, as a forward, yeah. you know, you, I think yourself, yeah. Cameron Smith, um, were very, we're, we're not too far behind. Yeah. I know JT was the first one to break it in right. 2012. Yeah. How does that feel though, knowing that you held the record for that long, but it's taken a player of the calibre of Jonathan Thurston to, yeah. to break yeah. it? It must be pretty, yeah. pretty proud for you. I mean, yeah. it's sad to sort of see the record tumble, but maybe, like, maybe, like, maybe they should have a, uh, a forwards record and a backs record. <laughs> yeah. hey? You know what I mean? You know what I'm coming from? Bloody, yeah. bloody backs. Yeah. Hey? <laughs> bloody backs. But anyway, yeah. no, that. Couldn't go to a nicer bloke, yeah, uh, yeah. a terrific competitor yeah, yeah. Uh, for Queensland. You finished your Origin career, um, went on, retired from, from uh, NRL, and then where, where did life take you after right. that? Right, you know, well, in, in no man's land for a little while. Mm -hmm. You know, just yeah. um, trying to come down off the, the whole environment that you 